I don't want to waste my body, my mind, my feelings for a guy who doesn't even fight for me, who doesn't even care about me. You weak. She told him. Natalie builds the courage to end her situationship with Josh. I'm not interested anymore in seeing you. And although he acts sad about it, in reality, he's probably more relieved. I like you a lot. I really do. I like you a lot. I do. But I just think that you just need something different. Mm. This is 90 Day Replay Travel Size, where I pack in all you need to know while keeping it light. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam. It's Malicia. It's good to see you. <laughs> you can give me a yeah. hug. That was awkward. Natalie confronts Josh this episode about his lack of consistency and commitment in their relationship. At this point, they've been in a situationship for the past year and a half. And lately, Josh has been keeping his distance from Natalie. I feel like there were many times I told you what I want. And every time your, your word said one stop, but your action was telling me, Natalie, I don't want you. Oh. And when I came to LA, I was hoping it's gonna be like kind of equal. But whatever energy I put, it's just obviously not enough. No, no. The energy he's putting in is not enough. <sighs> the words that are coming out of Natalie's mouth sound so familiar. I've been there before. And I had to get to a point where I boldly accepted that I am enough. And if how I'm showing up isn't convincing you to lock it down, put a ring on it, you're not for me. It gets to a point where you have to ask yourself, why am I giving another human being the power to determine if I'm enough? Desirable enough, attractive enough, successful enough, smart enough, when they're not even measuring up. The reason why Natalie and Josh are having this conversation now is because he was not meeting her needs, her standards. But she's worried about how she appears in his eyes. What about how he appears in hers? Who made him the prize? It's interesting because I see this dynamic play out often when you have someone who wants commitment dating someone else who avoids it. Psychotherapist Esther Perel describes it as, there is one person who is more in touch with the fear of abandonment and one person who is more afraid with the fear of losing themselves. For the person who wants commitment, this dynamic ends up triggering any self-worth issues they have, which can be painful, of course, but it can also be beneficial because it shows you where you still have work to do. And the more you do that work, the less you'll put your power into someone else's hands, as if they are more valuable than you. I was excited for you to be out here, and I tried to, as much as you were. Uh, yeah, as, you did. Are uh, you tried? As much as you were. Josh, I never been to your home. You tried. It's been almost a year since you invited me to your home. You tried, yeah. You really tried. I like how she's not letting him get away with his little excuses. Natalie starts to turn up on Josh. It's that part of a breakup conversation where you start feeling yourself a bit. I'm woman one in a million, you know, and I deserve a great man. I don't want to waste my body, my mind, my feelings for a guy who doesn't even fight for me, who doesn't even care about me. You weak. That's Natalie's mom coming out of her. She has been talking down on Josh since the moment he backed out of picking them up from the airport at the last minute. You know, like, I don't like to give all I have and to be treated like, I you know, like, that. it's just regular. I, I, I understand that, and I, I'm, not, I'm sorry that you felt that way, that I treated you regular, but it's not, it's not that I was doing things on purpose, it's because I have obligations. AKA, this relationship is not a priority for him. My life, it's very complicated, and you, you need somebody that can be around more, or maybe somebody that, that doesn't have kids, that you can start your own family. I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm not able to give you what you want. Natalie goes on to tell Josh that she's not interested in seeing him anymore. It took me a year and a half to understand, like, you do not want me. Oh, you can hear the pain and the desire for her to hear him say, but I do want you. She even says this. I just know that you don't love me and there's no point. And he hits her with the... I like you a lot. I do. But I just think that you just need something different. 
I would be curious to know what his honest feelings are. No filter. Although I stand by Natalie not allowing him to determine her worth, if he's truly honest with her, he might have some feedback that can help her in future romantic partnerships. I am genuinely sorry. I have already love in my life, but it's not to men. I love my life, I love my mom, and uh, sometimes you don't have to have men to love. I know that's right, Natalie. Wow, I think that is the smartest thing I have ever heard her say. Seriously. There can be so much love around us that we don't notice or value because we're too busy placing so much value on receiving love from a romantic partner. If you're not in a relationship and you want one, personally, I think it's wise to allow yourself to soak in love from other areas of your life. You might be surprised at how satisfying it can feel. Uh, maybe I meant to be alone, which is fine. Natalie goes on to share that men only bring her pain. And Josh, with this look of relief on his face, gives her a kiss on the hand. Sometimes we fall for people who just not fast. And I fall for a guy uh, who distracts me emotionally and makes me weak when I have to be with someone who will heal me. Well, my question for Natalie is, if this person who can heal you doesn't show up with all the glamour or flash, would you still be open to it? Fast forward, she tells Josh she should go. They hug. This advice. And then Natalie goes and hugs a tree. It's so innocent of her to hug this tree. And smart, trees can be very grounding. I just feel like I deserve to be loved. I gave Michael seven years, I gave this guy. <laughs> And I just can't. <laughs> and it makes me feel so much terrible. Alone in this country with no friends in LA. I have no one with mom. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You're going to figure it out, Natalie. Like so many have. You are not a damsel in distress. Cry it out, be thankful that Josh helped you get stable in LA, and keep it moving, girl. Thankfully, it's looking like she's going to do just that. Wait, didn't Michael want children? We have to be careful about the stories we tell ourselves. It's either that, or she's admitting she was never in love with Michael. I thought I would have a child at this point. So I decided to take control of my life. Welcome to Vida Fertility. Yeah, I'll let Dr. Mm -hmm. Good for her. She's doing what she can. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, thanks for hanging with me. Make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.